Now, another thing that happens is that if we have suffered, you know, some loss in our past, or if we have gone through some hardship in our past, something has happened, it's over now, but we're still grieving over it. Does it happen? Hmm? Sometimes we remember an argument that happened 10 years ago, and then we just start crying. Huh? Because we can hear those words echoing, you know, in our head, those harsh, very harsh words that somebody said to us. This is remembering our past and grieving over our past. Now, so far we were talking about problems that happen now, right? Which are in our present. But things that have happened in the past also haunt us. They hurt us. Now, how do we deal with that? This is basically called huzn. Huzn is to grieve over what has happened in the past, but it's now over. You know, like that conversation is now over. It's ended. That person who said those harsh words to you is living in a different country now. You haven't seen them maybe in two years. Hmm? It's over. And they're not that harsh with you anymore. They have changed completely. It's possible. Your relationship with them is really good now. But we keep remembering our past and we keep grieving over it. This is huzn. Now, Huzn is something so detrimental that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids us from it. You know that? In the Quran, Allah says, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا لَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not have huzn. The Prophet wasallam would seek refuge with Allah against huzn. He would make dua, اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الهم والحزن Oh Allah, I seek your protection. From hum, from worry, and from grief. That saved me from grief. Why? Because grief, what it does is that it makes your past problems your present problems. Huh? And what has gone is gone. Can we bring it back and change it? We cannot change it. Can we alter it? No, we cannot. What is the best thing that we can do? Huh? Bury the past. Bury the past, exactly. Bury the past and keep reminding yourself... It's over. Alhamdulillah. You know, time is something amazing. It's such a big blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The time never remains still. It keeps moving on. Keeps moving on. So something that is hurting you right now a lot will soon become history. It will soon become past. So this is something that we need to do also. Another thing we see is that any hardship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in our lives, hmm? any difficulty, whether it was something that happened before, or it is something that we're going through right now, or it is something that we see coming in the near future, any difficulty, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose it for you. Allah chose it for you. Because is life going to be full of problems? Is it? For sure. We discussed that earlier. This is the sunnah of Allah. This is the way of Allah that He will definitely test His creation. And we are also His creation. So we too will be tested. But the fact that, you know, for example, your head may be hurting right now, this is something that Allah chose for you right now. Now, you know, sometimes there are things that we choose for ourselves. And then there are things that others choose for us. What do we generally like? What we have chosen for ourselves. But sometimes, we're not able to trust our own decision. Which is why when we go shopping, we never want to go alone. Isn't it? We want somebody to come with us. To approve our choices. When we're buying something online, we don't hit buy, purchase, until we have shared that link with somebody. Correct? Correct? Because we want approval. Now think about it. The difficulty that is coming in our lives, who has approved it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who has chosen it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let us be content with the tests that Allah has chosen for us. This is why the Prophet ﷺ used to say, وَأَسْأَلُكَ الرِّضَى بَعْدَ الْقَضَى Oh Allah, I ask you for ridha, for pleasure. After decree, meaning what you have decreed for me, when it happens, I ask you that you make me pleased with it, you make me content with it. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he said, no doubt, when Allah decides a matter, He likes that His servants be pleased with it. 
When Allah decides something, He likes it that His servants should be happy with it. Think about it. When you cook something, what do you want? People should enjoy it. They should like what you have decided to cook today. Right? And when you hear a comment as, Chicken again? Seriously, mom? Are we having leftovers? Rice? What do you say? This is not a restaurant. This is a kitchen. Isn't it? What do we want? That even if we are driving at a particular speed on the road, nobody should question us. Right? Nobody should say, can you speed up or can you slow down? Can you move to this lane or can you move to that lane? We're like, no, don't do that. I have decided this, so you better be cool with it. Who are we? We are just people, just mothers, just wives, just women in our families, just friends. But we want that whatever we have chosen, whatever we have decided, people should be cool with it. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also makes decisions for us. He decides how to test us, what to test us with. And what does He want? That whatever test He has chosen for us, what should we do? We should be content with it. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said that Allah has made the reward for yaqeen and ridha, happiness. Meaning when a person has faith, conviction in Allah, and he's also content with Allah's decisions, then what's the reward for that? Happiness. A person will find joy. He will be happy. And Allah has made the result of doubt and anger, grief and sorrow. Meaning when a person will doubt Allah's decisions, His existence, and he will be angry with it, then how will he be? Upset and sad and grieved. Therefore, Ibn Mas'ud anhu said, whoever is pleased with Allah, then no matter what state he is in, he does not wish for anything other than that. He does not wish for anything other than that. This is ridha. That oh Allah, you chose this for me, I accept it. And when he will accept it, then what does he say? This is the best thing that could ever happen to me. You know, it's amazing. You see the lives of the prophets, alayhim salam you see the lives of great people of the past. They went through a lot of hardships. But what do we find? They were happy with whatever happened in their lives. Why? Because they made the most of the situations that they were put in. How could they benefit from it? When they accepted it. When they accepted that, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this for me. You know, a poet once said, عَذَابُهُ fika عَذْبٌ وَبَعْدَهُ fika قُرْبٌ عَذَابُهُ fika عَذْبٌ His tormenting you is sweetness. Meaning even if He is choosing to put you in some hardship, the fact that He is choosing some hardship for you, that itself is sweetness. I don't know about you, but at least for me, when I am given a responsibility, like for example at home, hmm? Like for example, you have to decide what the menu is going to be. It's very difficult. For instance, if 20 people are coming and you have to decide the menu for 20 people and then get the groceries and get everything and order the food and have everything ready, it's very difficult. But don't you have this feeling of happiness that, oh, don't you feel important? Do you feel important? I was chosen for this task. Right? If you're ever volunteering somewhere, and you're given some work to do, like real work, do you feel good about it? You feel good about it. Why? Because you were chosen for that work. Was it easy to do that work? Not at all. You were standing on your feet all day long, running around from one room to the other. It was very difficult. But in that difficulty is also the sweetness. There's joy. So, عَذَابُهُ fika عَذْبٌ وَبَعْدَهُ fika قُرْبٌ And after that difficulty... What is it that you will find? Qurb, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why be upset? There's nothing else you'd rather want because this is what Allah chose for you. You know, once at Hudaybiyah, the Prophet ﷺ went for Umrah, remember, with his companions. And the Muslims were not allowed to enter into Mecca. They were prevented. And then finally, a treaty was made between the Muslims and the mushrikeen of Mecca. And that treaty was basically very difficult. You know, it meant that Muslims would not be able to do Umrah that year. They would have to return and come back the following year. 
All right, and some other conditions also. So Umar radiallahu anhu, he was very upset. And he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, are we not on the truth? Are we not right here? Then why are we accepting all of this? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, inni abdullah wa lan yudayyani. I am Allah's servant and he will never waste me. This is what we need to remember when we're going through some difficulty. I am who? Allah's servant. And he will never waste me. He will never destroy me. As long as I am his obedient servant. And I am doing the best that I can. Also, remembering that we're not the only ones suffering. This is something that eases the pain for us. This is why we're taught that when it comes to the matters of the world, always look at those who are lesser than you. And when it comes to the matters of the deen, always look at those people who are ahead of you, better than you. So, you know what happens is that the reason why we find our tests and trials difficult is because we begin to think that we are the only ones suffering from this pain. We are alone in this. And when we think that we are alone in this, what are we doing? We are basically comparing ourselves to others. I have a headache, my friend doesn't have a headache. Hmm? I have five children to look after. My friend, she's single, she's having the best time of her life. Hmm? I am diagnosed with such and such disease. My friend is five years older than me and she's not diagnosed with this disease. Right? We're always looking at our dark side and the bright side of other people's lives. This is why we think that we are alone in our suffering. Whereas if you think about it, you're suffering in one way and others are suffering in another way. You have a blessing and other people have been given different blessing. And the fact is that there is always a reason to be grateful. Always. You know, no matter what happens, there is inna ma'al usri yusra. With the difficulty is also ease. It's not only difficulty. It's not only ease. It's with difficulty is ease. Both of them are together. You know, for example, sun, the light of the sun. It's difficult to look at. But with that difficulty, is there ease? Yes, the weather is nice and warm. Just wait for a few days and then see what happens. Right? Or even on the coldest days, with the sun being up, it's really bright to look at. But still, don't you feel that warmth inside your house because of the sun coming straight at your house? Right? Through the windows? You feel that warmth. So with difficulty is ease. Also, we need to remember that having problems is better than not having any problems at all. Having problems is actually better than not having any problems at all. You see, generally, what is good for us comes to us in not so beautiful or attractive forms, okay? Like for example, if you want to have a degree, if you want to have a particular, for instance, a certification, can you just go and buy it with your money? Can you? You can't do that. What do you have to do? You have to work hard. You have to. When you are suffering from some illness, from some sickness, and you need to take the medication, and let's say that that medication is only through an injection, is it going to be painful? It's painful, but it is only through that pain that you will find ease. Right? You will find relief. In Surah Al Baqarah, 216, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَقْرَهُ شَيْئًا أَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ It's possible that you dislike something, you detest it. But in reality, it is good for you. And this is the beauty of our religion that there's always, you know, the other side. Always. Things are not one-sided. Never. You know, for example, when it comes to this life, you're going through some difficulties, but you know that it's not just this life. There's also the hereafter. When you are working hard and your efforts are not really producing great results, you know that you're not just going to be rewarded for your results, but also your effort and your intention. Right? So likewise, something may appear to be very difficult and very painful, but there's also a positive side to it, a good side to it. So, asa أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْهًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ In fact, we, see, we learn 
that if a person has never been ill, never ever been ill, it's not really a good thing. Hmm? It's not really a good thing. In a hadith we learn, Abu Hurairah al anhu reported, this is a hadith in Musnad Ahmad, that once a Bedouin man, he came to the Prophet ﷺ. And in the conversation, the Prophet ﷺ asked him, have you ever been seized by Umm Mildam? Umm Mildam is the name of a particular disease. All right. And the man said, what is Umm Mildam? So the Prophet ﷺ said, it's the heat that is between flesh and skin, meaning that heat you feel on your, on your skin, on your body. Fever. So the man said, I've never experienced anything like that. No fever ever. The Prophet ﷺ then asked him, Have you ever been afflicted by a suda? And the man said, What suda? So the Prophet ﷺ described a headache to him. The suda is headache. All right? The man didn't know what a headache was. He didn't know what it was. So the Prophet ﷺ had to describe it to him. And the man said, I've never experienced anything like that. And when you hear this, what's, what's in your mind? Hmm? So lucky? I wish I was like that. We think like this, right? The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever wishes to see a man from the people of hell should see this man. A person who has never ever been afflicted with anything is not lucky. Not lucky. A person who's never seen difficulty in life is not fortunate. He's actually unfortunate. Because difficulties, they erase our sins. Difficulties draw us closer to Allah. They make us feel needy. Don't they? Weak. They remind us of our reality. They make us understand who we really are. Allah's servants, weak. They make us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if a person has not suffered any difficulty ever, he's not lucky at all. Now this doesn't mean that we start asking for problems in life. No. First of all, we should never feel proud of the fact that we are safe in a particular way. We're not suffering from a certain problem in our lives. And secondly, on the other hand, we should not ask for problems. But if problems do become a part of our lives, like for example, we do get a headache, then let us not cause headaches to other people by complaining about our headaches. This is something that we need to remember. Don't ask for problems. But when they do come, let's not fuss over them. Because having problems is better than not having any Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he said that disease is like medication for the believer. You know, we think disease means we need medication. But disease itself is medication. Why? Because disease, difficulty, it cures us. It cures us. How does it cure us? How does it fix us? How? Has it ever happened with you that because you got sick, you started taking care of your diet? You started taking care of your health. You started walking and, and so on and so forth. And all of a sudden you look so nice and, and fit and healthy. And people are wondering what happened. And you say, oh, I got sick. You got sick, but you, you look so good. Right? That sickness became a reason for your cure. Also remember that if we really want to go further in life, if we really want to draw closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then difficulties and trials are definitely going to be there. Because when you look at the lives of great men, great people, whether they were the prophets, or even successful in worldly terms, what do you see? These people suffered a lot. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that I never saw anybody suffering so much from sickness more than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In another hadith we learn that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa once he had high fever and someone commented that, Ya Rasulullah, you have a very high fever. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Yes, I have as much fever as two men of you. Double, double fever. You know, a poet once said, وَكَمْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنْ خُضْرٍ وَيَابِسَةٍ وَلَيْسَ يُرْجَمُ إِلَّا مَا لَهُ ثَمَرٌ How many fresh and dry trees there are on the earth? So many. But none is hit with stones except the one that has fruit. Right? 
which tree is it that people are going to throw rocks at, stones at? Which one? The one that has fruit. And the one that doesn't have any fruit, who's going to care about it? Nobody's going to care about it. Right? We, we do care about trees for different reasons, but and generally, which tree is it that's attacked? The one that has something. So likewise, the higher we want to go in life, the further we want to go, the more successful we want to be, the more trials there are going to be. So when we do find difficulties in our lives, what's their purpose? To take us further. Also, we need to remember that Patience over hardship will turn that hardship into a blessing. Every hardship is not a blessing. When is it a blessing? It's a blessing depending on what we have done, how we have reacted, what we have learned, how we have improved. Because if a trial, if a difficulty has made us more miserable and more unhappy, and it has taken us farther away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then was it a blessing? Not at all. But if a trial made us think about our actions, it made us think about our responsibilities, it made us more caring about others, then was it a blessing? Yes, it was a blessing. Also, what we need to remember when we are in difficulty, what is it that we have to do? We have to think about the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set. When we will guard the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for us, then Allah will guard and protect us. Then He will save us. The Prophet sallallahu he said to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, Ya ghulam, ihfaz illaha, yahfazka. O oh young man, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. So whenever we feel that we need Allah's protection, I am very sick, I might get you know, worse in my sickness, this is getting very painful for me, I don't know if I can handle all this stress anymore, this work is getting too difficult, I think I need to quit, these children are getting on my nerves, this husband is getting too difficult to deal with, whatever it is, we need to pay attention to the limits that Allah has set for us. When we will take care about them, then Allah will take care of us. Now, what does it mean by guarding the limits that Allah has set for us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us certain commands. Has He? Like for example, hmm? Worship Him only. Okay. And how do we do that? How do we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Praying salah for example. Generally, when we think about the limits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, we think about salah, hijab, a beard for men, and, and such things. Yes, they're there. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also ordered us to obey our parents. Yes. To be good to our parents. To show respect to the elderly. Hmm? Now, sometimes what happens is that there are people in our lives that we're not really taking care of, whether they are our parents or maybe our grandmother or our grandfather in our own house. When we're neglecting them, essentially, what are we neglecting? The limits that Allah has set for us. So if we want to be helped by Allah, then we have to first help the creation of Allah. When we will worry about what we have to do, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of what He has to do. What do we have to do? What do we have to do? Remain Allah's obedient servants. And what is it that Allah has to do? Take us out of that difficulty. Ease that situation for us. So, اِحْفَظِ yahfalka. You know, in Quran we learn, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ those people who guard their prayers. They guard their prayers. And in hadith we learn that the person who guards his prayers, then Allah will guard and protect him from hellfire. Meaning Allah will admit him into paradise. This is a hadith in Musnad Ahmad. So we guard what Allah has obligated us with. And Allah will take care of us. So much so that even if we have died, we are gone from this world, Allah will take care of our children. You know, in Surah Al-Kahf, today is Friday. Surah Al-Kahf, we learn about the story of Khidr. All right, that how he went when Musa alayhi salam, rather Musa alayhi salam accompanied him. And then Khidr, he came to a city 
And they asked the people of that city to host them. All right? But they refused. So Khidr went and he fixed a wall that was about to fall. So Musa alayhi said, why did you do that? You know, these people weren't even as generous as to give us one meal. You're going and fixing their, their broken walls? Why did you do that? So Khidr said that under this wall was a treasure belonging to two orphans. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا الصَّالِحَةً And their father was a righteous man. So Allah wanted that their treasure be preserved, their property be preserved, nobody gets their hands on it, it is saved, and when they're older, they can take it. Who's looking out for these children? Who is? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Why? Because the father was a righteous person. Now sometimes what happens is that when we are in difficulty, we think that we have to deal with our problems ourselves. The burden lies on, on us. I have to fix this. I have to deal with it. Right? I have to fight this problem in my life. But the fact is that we cannot do it alone. You know, for example, if you have a headache, a simple thing, what do you want to do? You just you know, get your hands on that headache somehow and yank it out and throw it away. Can you do that? What if you have like five Tylenols? Will it work? If you're taking five Tylenols, it means that one doesn't work for you. Three don't work for you. Which means that probably five won't work for you either. Isn't it? So, the fact is that problems that come in our lives, we really don't have full control over them. When they come and when they leave, we don't have control over them. Who has control over them? The one who sent them in the first place. He sent that difficulty to us and he will take that difficulty away from us. So while we are in that difficulty, what is it that we need to do? Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and think about what we have to do and repent from our sins also. Because sometimes, not always, sometimes the difficulties that we're going through are a result of our own sins. They are a punishment of our sins. They're basically difficulties are meant to wake us up. In Surah the shura ayah number 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَصَابَكُم مِّن مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Whatever difficulty has reached you, it is because of what your own hands have earned. You brought this upon yourself. Ali radiallahu anhu said the difficulties come because of sin and they only go because of repentance. They only go when a person repents from his sin. Once we learned that at the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, when he was a khalifa, there was an earthquake. All right? And when that earthquake happened, Umar anhu said to the people that, Oh people, this earthquake has come only because of something wrong that you're doing. So if this earthquake comes again, I'm not going to let you live here anymore. You have to leave Medina. Look at how much faith he had. That it is not possible that this earthquake is coming except because of our sins. So if we don't fix ourselves and we persist in our sins then we don't want the city of the Prophet ﷺ to be destroyed because of you and I. So if the earthquake comes again, you have to leave Medina. You can't stay here anymore. Hassan al-Basri anhu. at his time there was, there was a person by the name of Hajjaj bin Yusuf. He was basically a very, very cruel man. He oppressed the Muslims a lot, a lot. So the Muslims were suffering a lot at his hands. And Hassan al-Basri anhu, he said that Hajjaj bin Yusuf is God's punishment upon you. And fight him not with swords, but with istighfar, with repentance, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you really want to defeat Hajjaj bin Yusuf, don't just go for your swords. Beg Allah for forgiveness. And when you will do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take this punishment away from you. When we read in the Quran about the Bani Israel, how they were suffering at the hands of Fir'aun. How Fir'aun was killing their children and he was keeping their women alive and he had enslaved the entire nation, oppressing them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ In that was a great trial from your Lord. Meaning Fir'aun was actually a test on you from who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was a reason behind this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let this happen. Do you see, sometimes we do seriously you know, wrong things and we still expect good treatment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is deception. This is deception. 
Right? We are deceiving ourselves. How is it possible that, for example, we have a really, really bad relationship with somebody, extremely bad, and then at the end of the day we expect them to be all nice to us? Can we expect that? No. So if we are disobeying our Lord, then certainly there will be an increase in difficulties. And again, those difficulties also are a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why difficulties, they are meant to purify us. In Surah Ali Imran, Ayah 141, Allah says, amanu. That Allah will purify the believers. He will clean them. You know, just like I mentioned the hadith to you earlier, about how iron, when it's put in the furnace, what's the purpose? Purify. To purify it. Get that dirt off. So sometimes when we are you know, living in our comfortable lives, everything's fine. We develop some bad habits. And we don't even think about the wrong that we're doing. But then eventually, when we suffer from a problem, then all of a sudden we wake up. We wonder, what happened? I need to fix something. And what is it that I need to fix? Now, the last thing that I'd like to mention is that in our difficulties and our trials, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Him alone. In Surah Al-Anfal, Ayah 64, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and He said, Ya ayyuhal nabi, hasbukallah. O Prophet, Allah is enough for you. Waman ittaba'aka min al-mu'mineen and for whoever follows you of the believers. Meaning any follower of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is enough for him? Allah is enough for him. So when we are in some difficulty, who is it that we need to turn to first? Before anything else, before anyone else, before adopting any means to fix the problem, who is it that we need to turn to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like Ibrahim alayhi when he was thrown in the fire, what did he say? Hasbi Allah. Allah is sufficient for me. The Prophet sallallahu said, whoever suffers from destitution, and he begs people for it, meaning for help, then his destitution shall not end. His poverty, his pathetic state, it will never ever be over. Never. He will continue to remain like that. And whoever suffers from destitution, and he beseeches Allah for it, then Allah will send provision to him sooner or later. Meaning that Allah will extract him out of that difficulty. And in order to call upon Allah alone, we need to have complete faith and trust upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like Musa alayhi salam, when he was basically facing the sea, just imagine, not just a pool of water, not just a lake, a sea. Sea with its you know, waves and, and so much water. And then behind him is the enemy, Fir'aun. I mean, which enemy could be worse than Fir'aun? Seriously, which enemy? He was a baby killer. Fir'aun was a baby killer, literally. Behind him is Fir'aun, in front of him is the sea, with him is Bani Israel, who were extremely cowardly at that moment. And Musa a.s., what did he say? Inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdini. With me is my Lord who will save me, who will guide me. And for this we need to have husn al-dhan billah. We need to think good about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to think positively about our Lord. That if my Lord put me into this, He will definitely have some good in store for me. You know, in Hadith Qudsi, we learned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, أَنَا عِنْدَ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي بِي I am as my servant thinks I am. So if we're going through some difficulty and we expect the help of Allah, then Allah will never disappoint us. Never. But if we expect that, oh, Allah will abandon us. He hasn't heard my prayers till now. I don't think He's going to help me. I wonder if He's even there. Then that is what we will find. So we need to have husn one billah. You know, something that will help us increase in our positive thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having hope in Allah, just look at Allah's creation. How many there are? Hmm? Just think about it. You know, for example, if you want more money, for instance, just take a look at the people who are in this hall. Take a good look, come on. How many people are sitting over here? Who is the provider for every single one of us? He is, right? How many hearts are there in this room? How many hands are there? Huh? How many breaths do you think each person in this room has taken since they entered? 
Who provided every single one of us with oxygen? Who did? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Didn't He? So is our Lord stingy that we shouldn't ask Him? Not at all. He's so generous. So always, always have positive thought about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He will not ever disappoint you. And leave your affairs to Allah. And that means that whatever Allah has decreed, then let's accept that also. And have faith that ultimately for patience, the reward is always excellent. Because in Surah Hud, Ayah 49, Allah says, فَاصْبِرْ إِنَّ الْعَاقِبَةَ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Be patient. The final good outcome is for people of taqwa. Meaning those who fear Allah, Allah will not make them suffer. Ultimately, eventually, their outcome will be good. And for this, of course, we have to make dua. Just like the prophets of Allah did. Because dua is the weapon of the believer. Right? So we need to fight our problems and, and difficulties that come our way with which weapon? Dua. You know, you look at the Quran, so many stories of the prophets are mentioned and their duas are mentioned. وَلَقَدْ نَادَانَا نُوحٌ Nuh called upon us. وَنُوحًا إِذْ نَادَا مِنْ قَبْلُ Nuh, when he called to Allah from before. وَأَيُّوبَ إِذْ نَادَا رَبَّهُ And Ayyub, when he called upon his Lord. وَذَنُّون وَزَكَرِيَّ I mean, so many prophets, one after the other are mentioned. Yusuf a.s. father. إِنَّمَا أَشْكُ بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ So make dua, and make dua, and make dua, and more and more, and never stop. Because what does Allah say? وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord says, call upon me, I will answer you. I will respond to you. Who is more truthful than Allah? Is there anyone who is more truthful than Allah? Anybody? No. Nobody. Allah is the most truthful. So if He has said, call upon me, I will answer you, then we need to have faith in Allah's promises. And... For our du'as to be accepted, we have to remember Allah in good times. We have to. You see, there are two types of ma'rifah of Allah. Two levels of knowing Allah. One level is amma. Yeah, I know Allah. I believe in Allah. He exists. He's one. I worship Him. He created me. This is a general level of knowing Allah. But then there is khasa. A ma'rifah that is khasa. Knowing Allah at a higher level. And what is that? Knowing that my Lord will take me out of this. He put me in this, He will take me out of this. I trust in Him, I fear Him, I remember Him, and when I remember Him, I feel content. This is the ma'rif of Allah that we need to have. You know, once a salaf, he said that so many poor people have left this world without tasting the most delicious thing without tasting the most delicious thing. And he was asked, oh, what is that delicious thing? He said, ma'rifah of Allah. How many people have left this world without tasting this sweetness of knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is? So we need to know Allah, remember Allah in good times. And then Allah also will remember us. This is so beautiful. The more we get to know people, the more faults we learn about them. But the more we learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we grow in His, you know, in love for Him, in appreciation for Him. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has ma'rifah of His people. He knows His people, right? That is also of different levels. One is general. Allah knows about every single creature. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانِ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ Allah says He has created the human being and He knows what the soul whispers. Every single creature, every single human being, Allah knows about him. But then there is a khasa level, a higher level of Allah knowing His servants also. And what does that mean? That Allah doesn't just know His servant, He loves him. He protects him, He helps him, responds to his dua, re- relieves him of his difficulties. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those servants that He loves, He cares about, that through our tests, He elevates us, through our difficulties, he brings us closer to Himself. Because of the uh, trials that He sends our way, he, he forgives our sins, so that when we meet Him, He is pleased with us, and not a single sin remains with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us up amongst His chosen servants, and give us true ridla, contentment and pleasure and happiness with His decree, so that He also becomes happy with us. 
سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك Jazakallah khairan everyone for listening and Jazakallah khair sister Tamiya for giving such a beautiful insight today.